Hello people of the internet, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the great outdoors. It's, it's been a while and um, fortunately on the day that I'm filming this, summer's decided to come back for a late encore shall we say. However, I didn't come out here today to give you a weather report. I came out here today to introduce a new series I'm going to be doing on the channel called The Little and the Lost, referring to kind of what it says on the tin, little stations and or lost stations. So I guess it should technically be called the little and or the lost, but that's more of a mouthful. So I decided to simple it down a bit. And I figured probably the best place to launch this new semi-recurring series on the channel would be at the station that partially inspired this idea to begin with. It's a lovely little station, very local to me, but believe it or not, one that I've never visited before until it came to filming this video today. The station in question is Bromley North and it's just over the road. So let's go check it out, shall we? So we're now outside Bromley North Station and it's kind of hard to imagine what was here once because originally when this station first opened, New Year's Day 1878, there was kind of not much here at all. It was just a series of wooden shacks that were kind of dingy. You see, this was originally built by the Bromley Direct Railway Company, which was pretty much associated with and eventually amalgamated into the Southeastern Railway. No, not the modern Southeastern, the original Southeastern Railway Company, that one. And it was basically built as a sort of competitor to the already existing London, Chatham and Dover Railway Station in Bromley, Bromley South. However, it was also built on the cheap by the Southeastern Railway, hence why it was just a series of wooden shacks, which to say it earned some negative reviews at the time would kind of be a bit of an understatement. It was generally regarded as the worst station on the entirety of the Southeastern Railway. Except for Dungeness. Apparently that one was worse somehow. But fortunately, after the grouping of the Big Four in 1923, we had the Southern Railway take over all the constituent railway companies in this part of the country, including Bromley North Station. And one of its first tasks was to set about rebuilding the place into the station we see today. So I think it's about time we head inside and check out what they did with the place. And also, of course, because we're going to be in a station, Remember our mask. Okay, so now I'm on the platforms here at Bromley North Station, hence why I've got my mask on now, and we can really see the result of that big rebuild that the Southern Railway undertook of Bromley North Station back between 1924 and 1926. And the result is a small station that really doesn't feel like one. Now the rebuild was headed up by the then head architect of the Southern Railway, one James Rob Scott, who had quite a pedigree for really doing some very striking things with station and railway buildings. Try, for example, the Victory Arch at Waterloo Station, or indeed Surbiton Station in all its grandioseness. And I've got to say, he and his team did a similarly fabulous job here. Bromley North genuinely doesn't feel like a small station. It feels like someone's taken a full-size mainline London terminus station like a Charing Cross or a Cannon Street or a Victoria or something like that and just shrunk it down. That kind of airy concourse, that very inviting hallway and the booking office and then into this lovely kind of airy concourse area that's covered over and now onto the platforms with these big canopies and everything. It just feels nice. You get used to tiny stations like this one being very minimalist, basically having, you know, nothing here but a bike rack and maybe a bench if you're lucky, but this just doesn't feel like that. It feels way more grand than it has any right to be. And no wonder the main station building here at Bromley North became grade two listed back in 1990. And it kind of sums up the whole ethos of Bromley North Station as a whole to me, because 
The fact of the matter is this, even though this was originally built to be something of a competitor to Bromley South Station, suffice to say it's never really been close in terms of passenger numbers, but in the middle of this kind of very bustling, urban, busy section of South London lies this little oasis of elegance and calm in amongst everything else. And I just love the fact that not only was it built to begin with, but that it still exists and still flourishes. It did survive the sweeping beaching cuts of the 1960s, although not completely unscathed. There were originally some uh, good sidings over there, which are now, Kel Surprise, a car park. They were removed in 1968, as was the passing loop that was present on Platform 1. That was removed in 1975. And in the late 1980s, the station was once again under scrutiny. It's like, is it is it needed? Can we cut it? You know, does it, does it justify keeping open? And in the end, it did survive, although its direct services, which it had for a very long time, from here all the way through to places like London Cannon Street and London Charing Cross, were cut. And so we were left with the service that we have today, which is just a little five minute shuttle service between here and Grove Park, which is where the branch branches off from the main line. And believe it or not, there is an intermediate stop on this one and a half mile long branch at Sundridge Park. It's so close that when you look off the end of the platforms here at Bromley North and the trains turn around the corner, that's basically where Sundridge Park is. <laughs> so much about this station that part of me feels like almost shouldn't exist today. Now, it's not because I don't want it to. I'm just saying more in terms of how we're so used to small stations being shut down in the end, finding reasons to close down little things like this. If you do have smaller stations like this, they're normally carved down to the bone and rationalized and there's barely any track, there's barely any buildings, there's barely any facilities. Yet, this is a little branch line that's double track throughout, by the way, with an intermediate stop and a terminus station here at Bromley North that is quite exquisite, to be honest. And I think it's lovely that it continues to exist. And there have been a number of proposals of varying levels of interest. There's been proposals to link it to an extension of the Baker Loon line. Potentially, the one I like the most is one that pitched linking this and the branch to the London tram link. But in the meantime, it is still here. It's still alive, 142 years after it was first opened. It's a little station that could, and I hope it never, ever gets lost. Until we meet again, friends, I'll see you guys soon along the way.